Welcome to Lesson 1.1, Applied Statistics at Bellevue University. This first video is an introduction to statistics. Let's get started with some terminology. This terminology is going to be important to understand all of the examples we'll take a look at moving forward. If you'll notice, I have population and parameter both in the same color in blue and sample and statistic both in the same color in green. The reason that I did that is because we always talk about population with parameter and we always talk about sample with statistic. So what is the difference? Well, a population is the entire body of things that we are studying. So if we were studying students at Bellevue University, then that would be the population. Whatever we're studying about those students, say GPA or marital status or whatever it is that we're trying to learn about the population of students at Bellevue University, that is called a parameter. It's a numerical description that measures whatever variable we are studying. Now, often it's very difficult to talk to every member of the population. In that case, what we do is we take a look at a smaller sample. A sample is part of the population and it is representative. And of course, I'm using this word subset, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with this word, but if this rectangle represents all BU students, and it's too difficult for me to talk to every member of that population, I'm going to take just a small subset of that population. This is my sample. I'm going to talk to a smaller group of students and I'm going to study the exact same variable that I was going to study in the population. And I'm going to do that for my sample. And when we're talking about something that we're measuring for a sample, it is called a statistic, not statistics. Statistics is the entire you know, course that we are studying or the um, mathematical area of interest that we're studying. So that's the difference between population with goes with parameter and sample with goes with statistic. Whatever it is that we are studying is called a variable. So whatever the variable of interest is, it's a value or characteristic that changes for each member of the population. Again, if we were talking about GPA, that variable would be the GPA and each student would obviously have their own GPA. Data is the actual values, so the counts, the measurements, the observations that we are recording about that variable. So in that example, that would of course be all of the GPAs that we are um, looking at. And lastly, let's talk about a census. Why is census important? Well, again, we talked back at the beginning about how the population is great, but often it's difficult for us to speak to every member of the population. When we talk to every member of the population, it's called a census. Let's take a look at an example together for identifying the population, the sample, the parameter, and the statistic. So we've got a co consumer advocacy group that wants to survey residents of the Midwest regarding hospital care. So the group mails out 11,450 surveys. A total of 942 surveys are completed and returned. 57% of those 942 surveys say their hospital care was above average. The statisticians um, analyze all of the data and determine that approximately 60% of people in the Midwest are satisfied with their hospital care in the region. So now let's start with what is the population? Again, the population is the entire group of people that we're studying. So looking back at the sentence that tells us about the study, it says the consumer ad advocacy group wants to survey residents in the Midwest. Residents in the Midwest is our population. All of the members of the Midwest is who we are studying. Now, the sample. The sample is part of the residents of the Midwest that are representative of all residents of the Midwest. In this case, again, we have mailed out 11,450, let me change colors, 11,450 surveys and 942 are returned. So a lot of people get confused here and want to use the 11,450 
but we can't actually determine any information from all 11,450. We can only study the 942 that were returned. So that is the sample, 942 households who returned the survey. Now remember, the population goes with a parameter. So let's take a look. I'm just going to use white for these two here. We have 57% say their hospital care was above average, and then 60% of people in the Midwest. So let's take a look at the difference. If I'm looking at the population, the population was all residents of the Midwest. Notice this says 60% of people in the Midwest. So that is our parameter, is the 60% of the people in the Midwest, because parameter always goes with population. And now if I look at sample, the sample is out of this group. So out of the group of 942, 57% of those. So that's kind of how we look at that, is determining which is which. Whenever you see a title in blue, that means I'd really like for you to stop the video, try the question on your own so that you can test your knowledge to see how much you are understanding. And then once you have completed the question, press play to see how you did. So if you would, please press pause now, read the question and try it, and then when you're ready, press play. So in this question, we have a survey of 257 residential college students at Bellevue University who were asked if they had eaten lunch in the student center. 72% of the students surveyed said yes, and after analyzing the results, BU determines that 70% of the students had eaten lunch in the student center. So the population is going to be everybody that we're studying, not the 257, but residential college students at Bellevue University. So we're not just interested in the 257 that we actually spoke to, we're interested in all residential, which means students that are taking classes on campus as opposed to online. Uh, the sample would be the part of the population that we actually talk to. That's going to be the 257. So that's part, obviously not all of the students at Bellevue University. As we're learning about the population and the sample, we're looking at the parameter and the statistic. So we have two values to look at. We have the 72% of the students surveyed. So I always like to tell students to look for that of, because it's telling you 72% of what. So 72% of the students surveyed, I shouldn't use yellow there, we'll just use blue. 72% of the students surveyed, and we have 70% of residential students. So which goes with which? Well, the parameter goes with the all residential students, and so that's this one right here, 70% of residential students, because that's speaking about all residential students. The statistic is the one that goes specifically with the 257 that we talked to, and that's the 72%. I have two more questions for you related to population, sample, and parameter and statistic. So in this case, I have only given you one, the parameter or the statistic. So you need to determine the population and the sample, and then whether that 82% in this case, because it's the one in pink, um, is a parameter referring to the population or a statistic referring to the sample. So we're looking at a survey that interviewed 679 American air travelers about increased security measures at airports. 82% of American air travelers are in favor of the United States airports using full body scan imaging. So what is the population? Well, really what we're looking at is all air travelers, all American air travelers. So not the 679 that we spoke to, but all of them. Now we did speak to 679, which is representative of all American air travelers. So that's the, going to be the sample. So now let's look at the 82%. Again, I encourage you to look at the of, 82% of American air travelers. Well, that's referring to the population and therefore it's going to be a parameter. Again, here's a question in blue for you. 
try this one on your own. Same process as the question that we just went through. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So again, we're looking at the population. We're looking at racial profiling as a means of determining which passengers to search at airport security checkpoints. Um, side note, I always am randomly selected to be randomly searched at airport security checkpoints, so apparently I look suspicious. Uh, the population here is, again, we're looking at adult Americans. So how do I know that? Because it says a national telephone survey of adult Americans. So 10 hundred or 1,092 is going to be the actual sample. That's who we actually spoke to, but we're looking at adult, all adult Americans, essentially. The parameter or statistic, again, we're looking at that keyword of of, 62% of Americans surveyed. So again, because we're talking specifically about those who were surveyed, that's going to be a statistic. The other terminology that we need to understand before we move forward is the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics is where we're going to spend most of the first part of our class, which is essentially data that we collect organize, summarize, display. Those are descriptive statistics. If we're finding the average of a sample, if we're finding the you know, standard deviation of something, those are all things that we're going to find. We're going to count the number of things that we're studying. Those are all descriptive statistics. Inferential statistics is what happens when we use our data that's gathered to make predictions about the population. So typically, descriptive statistics are going to be about a sample, and inferential statistics are going to be about the population. Again, we're going to use what we learn about in the sample to make predictions or inferences, which is why it's called inferential, about the population parameters. So this little scenario should look pretty familiar to you because this is the same scenario we looked at before. And right now I want to take a look instead at descriptive versus inferential. So what did we actually determine? What we actually determined is considered the descriptive statistics. And so that's the 57% of the people that are surveyed that said their hospital care was above average. That's based on the sample. The inferential statistics is based on analyzing the data in the sample to talk about what we believe to be true about the population, and that's the 60%. So if you go back a couple of minutes in our video to the example that we worked through before together, if you'll notice this guy was considered the, sorry, 57% was considered the statistic and the 60% was considered the parameter. So that's an easy way to kind of think of it. Up next, we are going to take a look at classifying data.